The following is an edited and summarized transcript of the sixth official interview with the alien being Errol. Errol critiqued the accuracy of mainstream textbooks on the origins of the universe and life on Earth. She claims that much of the information taught is based on false memories, inaccurate observations, missing data, unproven theories, and superstition. Historical medical practices like bloodletting as examples of how incorrect theories have been accepted in the past, implying that current scientific practices still contain many errors. Human scientists' primary mistakes stem from a lack of understanding about ISPs, entities that are the source of energy and intelligence for all life forms. Errol stated that the Domain Communications Office has authorized her to provide the humans with some information in order for us to have a more accurate understanding of, well, everything. She suggested that knowledge about the true origins of biological entities has been erased from human memory and promised to share factual material to aid in regaining this lost knowledge. The discussion touched on the topic of evolution but differentiates it from the complete truth, referencing ancient Vedic hymns as a mix of truths, half-truths, and superstitions. Errol criticized the theory of evolution arguing that it incorrectly assumes life can spontaneously arise from inanimate matter without acknowledging a motivating life force or spirit. It dismisses the idea that electrical or chemical interactions could animate life, comparing such beliefs to the fictional story of Dr. Frankenstein. Western science fails by ignoring the spirit as the source of life and argues that evolution is not accidental but requires advanced technology and supervision by intelligent beings referred to as ISPs. The text rejects the notion that humans evolved naturally from apes, stating no evidence supports this and calling it a hypnotic lie to obscure humanity's true origins. She added that humanoid bodies have existed in the universe for trillions of years and mentions that the Vedic hymns introduced by the Domain Expeditionary Force 200 years ago, contain a mix of truths and fictions and should not be taken as factual. The spread of these hymns and their misinterpretation are attributed to the memory erasure of Isbis on Earth. Humans who learned the Vedic verses mistakenly believed they came from the gods and eventually accepted them as literal truth. This led to the verses forming the basis of many religious practices, especially Hinduism, despite their euphemistic and metaphorical content. Errol, an officer of the domain, emphasized a pragmatic approach, rejecting philosophical dogma in favor of historical facts. The narrative then shifted to a personal account from billions of years ago, detailing her work at the Arcadia Regeneration Company, a biological laboratory that created and supplied new life forms to uninhabited planets. This company, along with others, specialized in producing various species suited to different planetary environments by manipulating basic genetic material. It was a highly organized industry with trade shows, publications, and coordinated projects among different companies. Errol described the extensive interstellar travel and research required for planetary surveys, during which she learned piloting skills. Data from these surveys were stored in large computer databases and analyzed by biological engineers. Computers, as described, are powerful artificial brains used across the galaxy for planetary administration and maintenance. New creatures were designed based on survey data, sometimes sold to the highest bidder, or customized for clients. These designs went through an assembly line of various engineers who integrated components into functional life forms. Prototypes were tested in artificial environments, then animated with life force before final testing on planets. Interactions between new and indigenous life forms were monitored, with conflicts resolved through negotiation and further modifications. This process is compared to eugenics. Occasionally, planetary environments were altered, though this was complex. Errol recounted a colleague's later project, 
delivering life forms to Earth to replenish its ecosystem after a galactic war around 70 million years ago. The creation of Earth's diverse ecological environment involved immense effort and collaboration from specialized consultants across various galactic biotechnology companies. The variety of life forms on Earth, often misattributed to the theory of evolution, were actually designed by such companies. The existence of millions of distinct and unrelated species, both living and extinct, and their spiritual animation is attributed to the work of ISBEs. Errol criticized the theory of evolution, claiming it fails to account for biological diversity and suggesting that species evolution requires deliberate genetic manipulation by ISPs rather than natural selection. Examples of selective breeding in dogs, pigeons, and koi fish are cited as evidence of ISP intervention. These animals have quote-unquote evolved in just a few years beginning with only one original breed. The creation of unique species like the duck-billed platypus is described as a result of intentional and sophisticated bioengineering, possibly commissioned by a wealthy client. The idea that life could emerge from random chemical interactions was dismissed by Errol. Instead, she emphasized that creating life forms is a complex task handled by specialized ISPs. She explained that some Earth organisms, like proteobacteria, are modifications designed for specific types of planets with anaerobic atmospheres near hot blue stars, such as those in Orion's belt. Human biologists were not seen in good light. The memory erasure by the old empire prevents them from recognizing genetic anomalies and understanding the true origins of life. The invention of sexual reproduction is a solution to the problem of constantly replacing destroyed organisms, a concept developed trillions of years ago during a conference organized by the Council of Yumi Krum. The creation of the food chain was a result of this conference, where a company specializing in insects and flowering plants proposed that creatures consume other life forms for energy. This company also created parasites and bacteria, illustrating the interconnectedness of their biological designs. Errol detailed the history of a company translated as Bugs and Blossoms, which sought to justify and expand the market for parasitic creatures by promoting the idea that life forms should feed on other life forms. This led to the creation of a scientific theory that all creatures needed food as an energy source. Previously, life forms consumed sunlight, minerals or vegetable matter, and carnivores did not exist. Bugs and Blossoms began designing and manufacturing carnivores, and to address the resulting depletion of animals, proposed sexual reproduction as a solution. They developed and patented the biological engineering processes for sexual reproduction, which other companies were then required by law to purchase and implement. This expensive and complex undertaking led to the corruption and the eventual downfall of the biotechnology industry, including bugs and blossoms. As the industry collapsed, the knowledge and technology to create new life forms were lost. Consequently, extinct species could not be replaced, and the procedures for biological engineering are only recorded in forgotten computer files on distant planets. The domain now focuses on protecting the remaining life forms on Earth due to the irretrievable loss of this technology. The technology behind sexual reproduction involves cyclical stimulus response generators, a programmed genetic mechanism that creates recurring impulses to reproduce. This was applied to various life forms, including humans. A key part of this process is the chemical electrical trigger mechanism, which attracts ISPs to inhabit bodies through an artificially imprinted electronic wave combining pain and beauty, making the ISBs stuck in the body. For lesser life forms, reproduction is triggered by chemicals from scent glands and hormonal impulses from testosterone or estrogen interacting with nutrition levels to promote reproduction during food scarcity. 
this principle is applied across all species. The ruling class of the domain avoids inhabiting flesh bodies due to the addictive nature of the sexual aesthetic pain wave, using doll bodies instead. This wave is an effective trap used by both the Domain and the Old Empire to maintain a workforce of ISPs in flesh bodies who perform manual labor. There is a rigid class system within these civilizations. Both the Domain and the Old Empire have hierarchical systems among ISPs. At the top are free ISPs, unrestricted by bodies and able to move freely as long as they don't disrupt societal structures. Below them are limited ISPs who may use bodies occasionally but have restrictions on their abilities. The doll body class, which includes space officers and crew members, uses lightweight, durable bodies designed for specific functions, often with interchangeable tools. To note, Errol belongs in the doll body class. Soldiers form the next class, equipped with various weapons and often using mechanical bodies or remote-controlled robots. The lowest class is confined to flesh bodies, which are unsuitable for space travel due to their fragility and dependency on specific environmental conditions. Flesh bodies are impractical for space travel and military use due to their susceptibility to gravity, temperature extremes, radiation, and the need for food, air, and sleep. Additionally, flesh bodies emit odors and can be easily destroyed. In the domain, odors of any kind are not acceptable in their spacecraft, ISBs in flesh bodies have lost much of their native abilities, and while rehabilitation is theoretically possible, no practical means has been discovered or authorized by the domain. Although spacecraft from the domain can travel trillions of light years in a day, intergalactic travel still requires significant time, and mission orders can span thousands of years. Biological flesh bodies, which have short lifespans, 60 to 150 years, are impractical for such missions compared to reusable and repairable doll bodies. Biological bodies were first developed around 74 trillion years ago. Initially, ISBs created and inhabited these bodies for amusement and sensory experiences. Over time, ISBs became trapped in these bodies through various tricks including making fragile bodies that required careful handling, leading ISBs to minimize their power to avoid injury. This entrapment led to a long history of enslavement and the establishment of a hierarchical class system. This hierarchy is symbolized by the types of bodies inhabited, with the majority of ISBs throughout the galaxies now inhabiting some form of flesh body. The design of these bodies depends on the planet's gravity, atmosphere, climate, and the type of star it orbits. The history of ISB's relationship with bodies has seen a significant devolution, resulting in the current rigid class system enforced by both the old empire and the domain. Stars and planets are classified across the universe, with Earth being roughly categorized as a Sun Type 12 Class 7 planet. This indicates a heavy gravity, nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere with biological life forms orbiting a single yellow, medium-sized, low-radiation sun or type 12 star. However, accurate translations of these classifications are challenging due to limitations in astronomical nomenclature. The vast diversity of life forms across the universe is emphasized, with countless varieties created by millions of companies like bugs and blossoms over the course of 74 trillion years. This ends the summary of the sixth official interview, and we will now continue with the summary of the seventh interview with Errol. Errol shared some highly technical insights, beginning with an analogy about scientific knowledge and progress. She pondered how much more advanced Earth could be if geniuses like Gutenberg, Newton, Franklin, Carver, Tesla, Salk, and Trevithick, along with countless others, had never died, lost their memories, and could continuously learn and create. Such uninterrupted intellectual and creative activity could lead to extraordinary technological and civilizational achievements. 
She explained that the domain, a civilization existing for trillions of years, has made uninterrupted progress by continuously accumulating, refining, and enhancing knowledge in every conceivable field. Immortal spiritual beings, or ISBEs, are responsible for the creation of the universe, with every particle from the subatomic level to massive galactic structures being imagined and brought into existence by an ISBE. This creative process extends even to the design of cells and microbial entities, all originating from the thoughts of ISBEs. Every ISBE on Earth has participated in creating the universe. Despite being confined to fragile, short-lived human bodies and having their memories erased repeatedly through electric shock treatments, ISPs retain their core essence and knowledge deep within. This explains phenomena like child prodigies who can perform complex tasks without formal training. They are simply recalling knowledge from previous lives. Technological advancement on Earth has surged in the past century because the domain has diminished the influence of the old empire over humanity. This renaissance of invention began around 1250 AD with the destruction of the old empire space fleet. In the next 500 years, Earth has the potential to regain autonomy if humankind can solve the amnesia problem affecting ISPs. However, Errol cautioned that this inventive potential is severely compromised by the criminal elements on Earth, such as politicians, warmongers, and irresponsible physicists. These individuals create destructive weapons like nuclear bombs, which threaten all life on Earth. Even relatively small nuclear explosions have the potential to destroy life if deployed extensively, while larger weapons could consume the planet's oxygen in a single explosion. To prevent Earth's destruction by technology, humanity must first address social and humanitarian problems. The greatest scientific minds have neglected these fundamental issues, so scientific advancements alone cannot save Earth or humanity. True science must recognize the creative spark of individual ISPs who continuously create the universe. Errol criticized the current scientific paradigm which views existence as merely energy and objects moving through space for ignoring the spiritual essence that ignites all creation. This ignorance instilled by the old empire prevents ISPs from reclaiming their innate creative abilities. As long as the spiritual self is ignored, humanity remains trapped and headed towards self-destruction. She argued that the dogma of physical sciences is as unreliable as shamanistic incantations, both leading to entrapment and oblivion. Scientists, blinded by their limited perspective, fail to recognize the true source of creation, only observing its byproducts. Understanding the universe requires acknowledging the nature of ISPs, which cannot be comprehended through physical measurements alone. Errol concluded that everything about the creative force of a god can be found within oneself, an immortal spiritual being. She compared the limited perspective of current science to a blind man trying to teach others about the spectrum of light, emphasizing that understanding the universe without recognizing the spiritual essence is as absurd as mistaking a speck of paint for the entire artistic vision. The study of the spirit has been sabotaged by religious superstitions and scientific materialism. Religion and science, representing two extremes, form a prison that prevents a holistic understanding of phenomena. Religion emphasizes the creator over creation, while science focuses on creation over the creator, neglecting the interactive whole of existence. The studying creation without acknowledging ISPs the source of creation is futile. Earthly beliefs have instilled fear of exploring the mind and spirit, depicting them as dangerous realms. This fear benefits the old empire, which seeks to prevent people from discovering their true selves and the memories of their oppressors. True progress relies on ISPs enabling each other to recover their memories and self-realization rather than through control, dogma, or force. 
The survival of Earth depends on reclaiming the accumulated knowledge and essence of oneself, a solution that neither the old empire nor the domain has developed. The domain has only recently recognized the necessity of addressing ISB amnesia and currently has no solution to offer. Some officers of the Domain Expeditionary Force have covertly provided advanced technology to Earth during their off-duty time. These officers leave their bodies at the space station and assume or control biological bodies on Earth, a risky endeavor requiring great skill. One such officer was known on Earth as the inventor Nikola Tesla. Arrow intends to assist Earth in advancing scientific and humanitarian progress, even though it is not part of her mission orders. To solve Earth's amnesia problem, advanced technology and social stability are necessary. Although the domain is interested in maintaining Earth as a useful planet, it has no particular interest in its human population except for its own personnel. Arrow's spacecraft contains advanced technology that Earth scientists could reverse engineer to some extent, depending on available raw materials. Some technologies will be indecipherable or irreproducible due to Earth's lack of necessary natural resources, especially certain metals and the navigation system, which requires an ISP specifically attuned to the craft's neural network. This level of expertise is currently beyond the capability of ISPs on Earth who lack the specialized artificial bodies required. However, there is a small chance that some of Earth's most brilliant scientists might recall advanced technology when examining her spacecraft components. Similar to how Earth scientists have remembered technologies like electric generators and antibiotics, they may rediscover vital technologies from her craft. The spacecraft contains several useful systems. 1. Microscopic wiring or fibers within the craft's walls control communications, information storage, computer functions, and automatic navigation. 2. The same wiring is used for light, sublight, and ultralight spectrum detection and vision. 3. The craft's interior fabrics are far superior to those on Earth with numerous applications. 4. Mechanisms for creating, amplifying, and channeling light particles or waves as energy. While Errol cannot discuss the detailed operation or construction of the craft, she believes Earth engineers can develop useful technologies from these resources. She shared this information to benefit the greater good of the domain. Alright guys, this concludes the seventh interview. The next episode will likely be the final episode of this series and I'll get it published as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.